Let's keep reading. Verse 4, And his name shall be in their foreheads. Now notice over here that the name of God is also going to be in the foreheads of his servants. Verse 3. So that's important to understand. So if God's name is on his servants... Where do we get an idea that's close to that if you go back to Revelation 2? Now, I don't know if you remember this one. I taught you this a long time ago, which was kind of deep. Go to Revelation 3, excuse me, Revelation 3. Revelation 3. Now, I taught you that when God puts down his name... Yeah, this is like running out of room. Uh, yeah, you're All right, so... The name of God, he puts it on the forehead, which is why the Antichrist, he wants to put his name on your forehead. Satan always imitates God, as you might recall. But the name of God, it goes down to actually his servants. Context of Revelation 22. These servants, I pointed out, it could be who, what? It could be Christian and Jew over here. It can be these two groups of people over here. So if that's the case then over here, that it can include Christians and Jews, then how will this operate over here? It operates according to the double application of Revelation, two, uh, Revelation 3. I showed you a Christian application and a Jewish application on this one. So let me refresh your memory just a little bit, but I'm not going to go too deep on that. Revelation chapter 3, and then we'll read verse 12. Him that overcometh. So, who's the one that overcomes? Christians have overcome by believing on Christ for salvation. We saw that in 1 John chapter 5. The tribulation saints, they overcome through their works. We saw that in Revelation chapter 12, and their faith in Christ. So, this is a double application to a Jew and Christian. Now look at this. Him that overcometh. Will I make a pillar in the temple of my God? And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. See, God's giving them a new name. But he puts it in where? His temple at the beginning of verse 12. The temple is identified, I showed you last time, with New Jerusalem. Keep reading. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. Remember Revelation 21, 22. It says there's no temple. Why? Because the Lamb is the temple thereof. See? The Lamb and God are the temple. So New Jerusalem itself, where God's residing, is the temple itself. But God puts the name in that new temple, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So that new name is given, double application to a Christian, we can see that as well as to the tribulation Jew over here. I told you, if, I don't know if you have a good memory, but I told you a long time ago that I can see how this works for a Christian having the new name because he gets New Jerusalem, but I can't see how, uh, I, we have a dilemma, I don't know how that's going to apply to a Jew because the Jew gets the earth, not New Jerusalem, right? But then I showed you at Revelation 22, that if we take the idea that New Jerusalem is identified as the homeland for the Christians, the earth is identified as a homeland for the Jews, but we also believe in the idea that other people can live in other places, then it can harmonize over there. That would make a lot more sense. So things become much more clear now to me when I see this double application in Revelation chapter 3, how that's going to work both for Christian and Jew. Okay, so now it's this. We see that this is a fulfillment of Revelation 3. Revelation 22 is a fulfillment of Revelation 3. God puts his new name on them at New Jerusalem. <clears throat> Let's go back over here, Revelation 22. Revelation 22. So then, if a tribulation saint overcomes, then according to, uh, if they endure all the way to the end, right? They love not their lives unto the death. Revelation chapter 12. Okay, so I'm not going to really get into this, but basically Revelation 12, it says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They love not their lives unto the death. 
So tribulation saints overcoming is faith and works. We see that according to that verse. That's how they overcome. The Christian church based off of 1 John chapter 5. 1 John 5. Which is based off of believing no works. So faith and no works. So when the tribulation saints overcome all the way to the end, God puts them his new name. The Christian church, once they believe on Christ, that means you already overcome. You overcame. Once you believe, you overcame. He writes upon you his new name. Now, Revelation 22 says he writes the name on their foreheads. For the tribulation saint, we've seen that fulfilled at Revelation 7. God puts a mark on them. But he only puts it to 144,000. So it may be that the tribulation saint, they don't get, uh, not all of them receive the mark or the name of God until they uh, die. Until they enter God's throne, so to speak. So that could be, that could be the explanation. The Christian church, however, he's already written down and already marked. Because go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1. Because remember, a tribulation saint, he has to endure to the end. Remember that? So he has to endure all the way to the end. The Christian church, it's conditioned on believing. So because of that, you're already marked. Am I marked, Pastor? Yes, you are. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. In whom he also trusted, after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that he what? Believed. If you all, after you believed, 1 John 5 says, if you believe, you overcome, right? So that means you should be marked, right? Yeah. Yes. Keep reading. Ye were what? Sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. See? The seal's on you. So Paul Washer, John MacArthur can take a hike when they say that uh, if you're a Christian but you sin and you mess up, then you're not genuinely saved. No, they can go jump in a lake yeah. because you're sealed, you're marked already. Yeah. That's important to understand. So God already wrote you his new name. Why? Because we already overcome. We already overcome based off 1 John 5. We believed on Christ for our salvation. The tribulation saying, however, their overcoming has to be all the way to the end. Because they have to resist the mark of the beast so that they can maintain or receive the mark of God. That's important to understand. Okay, go back to Revelation 22. Go back to Revelation 22. I noticed how Revelation 21 and 22 is perhaps the deepest doctrines that we hit in our Revelation studies. So I hope you're enjoying it. We're wrapping things up over here. People get infatuated with Revelation 13, the Antichrist and stuff like that, but my goodness, you should be more fascinated with Revelation 21, 22. Doctrines are much deeper, and not only that, we're talking about your happiness here, what you're going to do. It's going to be a fascinating time. Okay, verse 5, and we'll close it here, okay? And there shall be no night there. So there's no night in New Jerusalem. And they need no candle, so they, they don't need a candle, neither light of the sun. It does not need sunlight, for the Lord God giveth them light. Because God is the light, He's giving them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. The reigning will be forever. And that's where Jeremiah comes in in 33, which is going to be interesting. All right, go, keep your hand at Revelation 22, because we're going to go back and forth, okay? Go to Jeremiah 33, Jeremiah 33. All right, I talked about populating throughout the universe, right? So this is where we get it. All right, the idea goes this way. If I have any room whatsoever, but I'll try to make room over here. <clears throat> the idea goes, first of all, it says there is no uh, sun, uh, no moonlight, because Jesus Christ is the light. But that doesn't mean the sun and moon is uh, gone, actually. It's still there. It's just referring to the light. Because God is the light. He'll continue it. Not only that, Revelation 22, if you look over there, it has to be according to the months. Remember the fruit? The fruit has to bring forth according to months. Genesis chapter 1, sun, moon, stars are there what? For times and seasons. 
It's to divide the time, the calendar. So see, sun and moon and the stars are still out there. So it's still going to be operating. But the verse is showing that its light is unnecessary. Why? Because God is the light throughout New Jerusalem. That's important to understand. Now, if you go to, if you look at Revelation 22, it says there's no need of the light and they're going to reign forever. Do you know what that means? What that means is, is that be, there's no need of sunlight or anything because God's the light. But Jeremiah 33 shows that sun and moon still goes on. Revelation 22 says the time and the season still continues. And then it's going to go on forever and ever. So the timing goes on forever and ever and ever and ever over here. And as the timing goes on forever and ever, when it says they shall reign forever and ever, it's showing that the reign of God is not just the time where it goes forever. The government and the people go on endlessly, population-wise. So they're going to fill out. Because remember, tribulation saints, their bodies, the millennial saints' bodies are made differently from ours. Remember that. They have to go to the least for the healing of the nations. Remember that. So that's why it's all going to be different. Their bodies are definitely functioned differently. It's like Adam and Eve, their body functions. See that? That's a tribulation saint, millennial saints. <laughs> the Christian church, it's in <clears throat> it is exactly like Jesus Christ, where it does not produce children, where it's forever, and where it's immortal. I mean, we got a great privilege and opportunity, you got to realize, man. We're truly blessed as a Christian church. Uh, the tribulation saint. Let's see what they do at Jeremiah chapter 33. Notice over here that uh, verse 11, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the who? Bridegroom and the voice of the bride. Ah, uh, remember Revelation 21? The bridegroom and the bride, they're in, uh, they were what? They were starting something here in eternity. So Jeremiah 33 is going to show a similar context here. Let's keep reading. The Bible shows over here at verse 14, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. <clears throat> What's he going to do? Verse 20, Thus saith the Lord, If ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season, then, al then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites the priests my ministers, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I what? Multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites that minister unto me. Look at that. Verse 25, Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed uh, the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant. So notice over here that God says that basically his covenant cannot be broken with Israel. In fact, he says his covenant is not broken, that they're going to increase. They're going to multiply when he rules over the world. And notice that the, the day and night, the seasons are still operating. You see that? But I thought there won't be any night there. Yeah, that's the key. It's in New Jerusalem. That's the idea. New Jerusalem. There shall be no night there. See? God is the light. But throughout the whole universe, man, you're still going to see in its beauty about the stars, the sun, moon, planets, and everything. Because it's going to increase and go on endlessly. Because, let's see, the Bible says that the people are going to be multiplied. Go to Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Notice over here that his government, his ruling increases. It increases so much. It will go on forever and ever. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. The, of the increase of his what? Government and peace there shall be what? No end. There's no ending to it. It's going to keep increasing. Upon the throne of who? David. Remember Jeremiah 33? 
David's throne is going to continue, and that includes size. That's what he meant, size, multiply, based on Jeremiah 33. And upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even for what? Forever. So it's going to go on endlessly. It's going to go on endlessly. Now notice that time is mentioned at the last part of verse 7, right? From henceforth even forever. That's the time there. The beginning of verse 7 of the increase of his government, that can't be time then. Because time is already mentioned at the last part of verse 7. So the first part of verse 7 then, the increase means literally its size then. So the size is going to go on endlessly forever and ever. Why? Because based off Jeremiah 33, it's going to keep multiplying. And that's why when these people get born, where do they go? They go to that tree of life over there according to their uh, birthday. So then the Gentiles, when they populate throughout the universe, uh, according to their birthdays that they were born, the people who were born, they're all going to visit inside that tree of life and they're going to eat it. So that's how it's going to happen. All right, for some of you who may have missed out the beginning, you missed out a big chunk, so you might have to watch the whole video and then get the gist maybe, if that was uh, pretty big for you. All right, but I can't expound on that. I have to end it here, so... The end, okay? But, but uh, that was the uh, deepest study in our revelation ever. So I hope that you have enjoyed it. And that when it goes online, you can write the notes because probably some of you got lost on this one. So it might, it might uh, do you good if you repeat the video and then uh, pause it and then rewind and look at the verse. You need to look at the verse. If you don't look at the verse, you're not going to get it.